we go. Fantastic. All right. Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for being here today. Welcome to today's focus conversation on how to build an equity team 101, creating a more inclusive and equitable volunteer culture with youth. And this uh, today we are feeding the, Hal the Halton Youth Initiative Equity Team. Uh, and uh, this is part. This is going to be part of a legacy group, with the Halton Youth Voices Council. Uh, welcome today. I just want to. I'm Heather Johnson, and I'm the director of Volunteer Halton, and I am delighted to be hosting today's event, bringing this fantastic team uh, to to today's presentation. For those that are familiar, um, Volunteer Halton is a fuller program of Community Development Halton. And what we do at Community Development Halton is we're striving to improve the quality of life for all residents of Halton region. And we do this through three major programs. We have our social planning research program, we have volunteer Halton, and we have age-friendly initiatives. Social planning research is uh, our data division. This is a team that uh, works with in community to collect data, to analyze the data, to use that data to help organizations make change within our community. Um, there's an, uh, an opportunity for us to see change. Um, one of the great things that uh, kind of has come out of uh, the data that we've collected was, for example, the um, uh, fostering of our Food for Thought program, which is the uh, Halt and Breakfast program here in our elementary schools. Age Friendly Initiatives uses the World Health Organization platform for creating a friendly cities, which is an eight point platform on uh, ensuring our communities and our cities uh, allow our, our adults and seniors to thrive. So this would be things like having accessible transportation, access to nutritious food, um, outdoor green spaces, uh, opportunities to come together socially within the community. Because we know that if we create communities where our older adults can thrive, that our, our adults and our teens and our children will do so at the same time. And Volunteer Halton, we are a volunteer center for uh, Halton Region. You can learn more about all of those particular programs at our website, which is cdhalton.ca. As I mentioned, Volunteer Halton, uh, we are a volunteer center, and in a nutshell, our job is to link people who want to volunteer with organizations that need them. We also advocate and act catalyst for volunteerism and civic engagement by providing leadership and education for volunteers and community organizations like today's event, bringing uh, the fantastic work of our youth forward uh, in this forum. Just a few quick housekeeping pieces. Please do mute your microphone during the presentation. We know someone's dog is going to start to bark, someone's kids are coming into the room, so just mute yourself. That'd be great. But questions are welcome. Uh, I and uh, program coordinator Lily will be monitoring the chat box uh, and uh, be bringing forward any questions that you might have. There probably will also be an opportunity for questions at the end. And we'll end up in an evaluation form uh, to everyone who's participating with some resources as well. Today, I want to uh, introduce you to today's presenters. So we have Casey, Ari, Trisha, Sahar, Shahana, Varun, and Kevin, who will be presenting today. Amber, unfortunately, cannot join us, uh, but she's a member of this team putting this great presentation together. I uh, will tell you a little bit about the two groups that have uh, formed this team. So the Halton Youth Voices Council, their mission statement is All Youth Voices Matter. And uh, they foster a safe, inclusive, and healthy environment where, vo where all voices are of utmost importance to everyone. They have three distinct goals to ensure that their work is impactful. Their goal is to find and share opportunities for youth to have a voice through different channels. Second is to advocate for and provide a platform for underrepresented youth voices to share their perspectives and engage in their community. And their final goal is to raise awareness about key topics, resources, and services that have an impact on youth. The Halton Youth Initiative Equity Team who is the uh, creative minds behind today's presentation. Um, this group was established in the pandemic with a growing attention on social justice, equity, and human rights. This team is passionate about connecting what they learn and turning it into action. And the Equity Toolkit is one way in which they should help youth and the community connect to make successful and sustainable actions that will allow everyone in Halton region to grow and to thrive. They want to acknowledge uh, that their efforts are ongoing 
and couldn't have been possible without the emotional labor and shared knowledge of the BIPOC queer and trans educators and activists from whom they've learned so much. So I am delighted to welcome the team today to make this presentation. I am going to stop sharing my screen. Kevin is going to start and we're going to have a great uh, afternoon. Thanks everyone. Team, take it away. All right. Um, Oops, sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Can you all see the slideshow? We can, that's great. Okay, great. Um, so, hi everyone. I hope you're all doing well. And welcome to our equity and inclusion with you um, and Equity Toolkit 101 training. So, um, to start off, uh, today, so today we are here to talk about youth equity and inclusion. This is an an ongoing journey for all of us, one that will last a lifetime. So we want to really thank you for being here today to connect, learn, and share. Um, we are all teachers and students in these efforts in different ways, and we did our best to create a team, a toolkit, and a training session with relationships and connections, um, seek humanity, humanity in our learning, and, and consistently moves forward. These efforts are built on the efforts of hundreds of years of activism, advocacy, and education. So right now, let's um, so right now let's start off with a land acknowledgement. Arkis Network is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and the Huron Bindak. Now, now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the credit First Nations. Um, um, we also recognize the lasting presence and deep traditional knowledge and viewpoints of the indigenous people with whom we share this land. Um, all right. Um, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Um, and now please take a moment to close your eyes and reflect. Okay, um, so now um, let's move on to an icebreaker. Today's icebreaker is, what is your favorite food? If you want, you can just uh, answer in the chat. Um, yeah, I think. Pizza. Ooh. I, I love, love pizza, pizza too. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they are, are very delicious. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, everyone. I love all the answers. They all sound super delicious. Oh, my goodness. Um, is, is everyone fine with pineapples on pizzas or no? I guess that's it. No? Yes. Pineapple. Okay, I see. That's cool. Oh, that's very good to hear. That's super cool. Thank you very much for sharing, everyone. <laughs> What's be done with that? Well, I have to say, I, I kind of feel like, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I like pineapple, sometimes I don't. But yeah, so thanks for sharing, everyone. Um, and now let's move on to um, introduce our team members. I think we already did that, but if everyone wants, just want to um, briefly say a hi and talk um, a, a bit, bit about themselves from the equity team, that'd be great. Anyone? Ke sorry, Kevin, do you have two Do you have two devices on? A lot of people are getting an echo and, and myself included. Do you have like your phone on with your computer or something? Oh, oh sorry, I, 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 I don't, don't think so. Um, oh, oh, sorry, uh, how about now? now? Is it better? Or uh, it still sounds echoey. Do I sound echoey to other people or is it just Kevin? I just wanted to check in. 
I I don't I don't think um I don't think you sound echoey. Oh, yeah. oh no, sorry to hear that, guys. Um. Okay. Um. Oh, sorry. So how about I will leave and rejoin maybe with that? Will help. Um, I think that's okay. Kevin, you just have one more slide, I think, and then other speakers will be taking over. So if folks can just um, kind of stay with us and, uh, and we can just forge forward with the rest of the HYI students introducing themselves. Yeah, yeah sounds good. I uh, so I need... Sorry. Oh, sorry, Casey, please go ahead. Okay, so hi guys. Um, my name is Casey. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a grade 12 at Milton District High School, and I've been part of the HYI for, I think this is my third year now, and I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I can go next. Um, my name is Varun. I've been here at the HYI for like since January, February, and I'm like really excited to know you all and be part of this special event. And I'm a grade 11 at student at Dr. Frank J. Hayden Secondary School. I can go next. Uh, my name's Sahar. I go to Milton District. I'm currently in grade 10. I joined uh, HYI last year, um, and it's been a fantastic experience. I loved all the projects we've been working on. Um, oh, and my pronouns are she, her. I can go next. Hi, my name is Trisha. I am in grade 10 and I go to Craig Kellyberger Secondary School. My pronouns are she, her, and I've been volunteering with the HYI since May of this year and I've loved every moment of it. Hi, I'm Sahana and my pronouns are she, her, and I am in grade 10. And I've been with the HYI for since the maybe the start of this year, I think. And it's been an awesome experience with the team and it just feels very inclusive and wonderful to work with the team. And I think equity is really important because um, it helps like youth reach their full potential. Um, I can go next. Hey guys, my name is Ari or Ariana Chua, if you will. I use they them pronouns and I am a grade 10 at St. Francis Xavier Catholic Secondary School in Milton. Um, I have been with the HYI for, I'd say like it's been two or three months, so only a couple months. Um, it feels like a family at this point. I've only been here for a short while. I know there's other people, like other students in the HY who've been here for years, but I've just been here for a couple months and it just feels like a family. So I'm excited to get this started with all of you. Um, anyone else? <laughs> wants to introduce themselves. Okay, I guess I'll introduce mine. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, 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 Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think Habiba needs to say hi before we move on, if if they're comfortable. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, if you are want to go, Habib. Sure thing. Hi everyone, my name is Habiba and I'm also part of the equity team. Um, I joined HYI like a couple months ago and I really enjoyed it too. And I'm really passionate about equity. So yeah, that's, and I live in Milton and I go to Bishop Reading. Um, and I am Kevin. Um, um, I, I am a grade eight student at James W. Hill Public School in Oakville, Ontario. Um, I enjoy volleyball and biking and reading and writing. Um, I joined the HY in August and this year, and it was a wonderful experience. 
um, um, I, I absolutely loved, loved it because everyone, everyone was so nice and it's, it's I, I, I'm, I'm just very glad you know that I'm making an impact. Uh, uh, my I pronouns are he, in. It's, it's basically he, him, him but um, the in is he in French. Um, and um, so I am passionate about equality because um, I feel like without I feel like right now, even here in Houghton, we do experience discrimination. Um, and although they usually they usually come in the forms of microaggression, but they can hurt. And I also just feel like we can't really move forward in this world um, or anything without really everyone being equal or at least not being discriminated against because of something of their identity. Um, so, yeah, and now let's learn a bit more about the How Youth Initiative. So, um, we started in 2019 and, um, and we will end at December 2021. We have a legacy team called the How Youth Voices Council. Um, that team will continue on, which is very great. Um, when our project began, so we are a part of the Our Kids Network. Um, and we began when, um, and then when um, the Ontario Trillium Foundation gave us a um, root grant, I think, or something. Um, and our goal was to elevate youth voices and empower youth to have a positive impact in Houghton. So, the, uh, so our project is youth led specifically, and um, so it has youth volunteers who identify local issues and develop strategies for possible solutions in terms of events, campaigns, and activities. Um, so our team went virtual in March 2020, and since then our interest in social justice and equity became stronger than ever. And that's why in May 2021, we officially created an HYA equity team. And in the equity team, we have three goals. We want to learn and we want to unlearn. So we want to make sure that everyone in our team has an up-to-date knowledge about equality. And we want to make sure that we are learning these from correct, the correct people. Um, that is um, credible sources. Like, um, so we want to basically learn it directly from racialized, queer, and trans activists and educators. We, our second goal is to develop the How to Build an Equity Team 101 Toolkit. We spent months building a toolkit for youth. So this toolkit um, for that, and it's, um, it's a toolkit for youth to use in schools and the community. And last but not least, our third goal is to host the Home Youth Equity Summit. Um, on November 6th, we hosted the, the first Town Youth Equity Summit, where, sorry, where 50 youth um, came together to present solutions to community problems around equity. It was absolutely wonderful. And um, we spent the entire afternoon building solutions. And we also got amazing support from our equity team and from the toolkit. So, so, and now, now let's learn um, a bit more about, about um, inclusive spaces uh, for youth. I will let, uh, I'll let Casey take it away. Hi guys, so my name is Casey again, and I'm going to be going over how to create equitable and inclusive spaces for youth. So what can community partners do to create equitable and inclusive space for youth? Creating spaces for youth that are equitable and inclusive requires us to consistently consider who you are serving and what their needs are. Each person will come to your programs, services, and volunteer positions with their own intersecting identity, whether that be ability, race, income, sexuality, gender, and more. It's incredibly important to set the stage so you should meet youth where they are at. This applies to how to recruit us, how to host programs, services, and volunteering with us, and how to prepare for a current level of knowledge and skills. With many tasks, we will need your help patience, training, and support. So making sure that the registration process is flexible is really important. So keep it simple, only ask for info that you really need. For example, do you really need their mailing address for a virtual position? Probably not. Um, can they send in registration multiple ways? So just being more accessible for youth, whether that be pictures to their phone, emails, or in person. When you're communicating with them, get comfortable with multiple channels of communication. For example, calling, texting, emailing, DMing, or via Zoom. 
be aware and culturally competent. So for example, recognize that certain times of year will impact people's availability and capacity. So for example, fasting during Ramadan, emotional stress during National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, Day of Rest for Jewish people. So that's Friday sundown to Saturday night. And you should always be aware when you're bringing food and refreshment choices if you're hosting in-person meetings. So just being mindful of people's dietary restrictions also be flexible with families coming together when possible. So for example, if there's a newcomer youth who has a sibling that they might have to take care of, um, allowing their sibling to participate in or being part of this discussion or in the meeting will help open the opportunity for this youth to participate as well. Participation and interactions between different generations and authority figures. So different identities interact with elders and authorities in different ways. It is important to build trust and appreciate the differences in body language between cultures. Recognize historically historic injustices by government, police, children's aid, for examples, and how their presence in your programming will affect youth. Similarly, try your best to ensure that your staff and adult volunteers reflect the demographics of your programs, services, and volunteer positions. It can create a stronger sense of security and a greater sense of understanding to connect with people in similar identities. And when you're thinking about building good teams, learn how to pronounce each name and be open to your pronouns, create team contracts and hold it accountable and learn as much Learn as much as you also do. So invest in training, for example. Let people lean in with their strengths and celebrate their strengths. That's really important. And that's something that Lily always does really well. And she always celebrates our strengths and she always hypes us us and, and we always feel great about it. Um, and find unique ways for everyone to lead. And ask. So once you have set the stage for an equitable and inclusive group or program or team, once that trust has been a story to build, ask how you can create a better space for youth. Then implement those changes and close the loop. So share with your participants how they, are, how they have, have affected your organization's policies and procedures. Actively seek different voices to be heard in your teams, in your events or programs, and even in your policies. So provide a variety of ways to contribute, whether that be written, oral, artistic, for example. Something that the HYI has done is create a survey for youth to reflect back on their experiences volunteering, what went well and what can be improved. And it's important to note that youth input is key. So now I'll pass it on to Ari to talk about designing safer spaces. Hello everyone. So yes, I'm Ari and I will be highlighting how to design a safe space for youth. So why should we focus on creating safer spaces for youth? Well, creating safer spaces for youth allows their voices to be amplified and fostered. We are young and finding our voice is an important thing and sharing it is key. Adults can focus on creating opportunities for youth and what they have to say, whether it's the type of food or drink in programs, the name in their team, decisions to make on events they are hosting, every youth has a voice that they deserve to be heard. Whether it be a virtual safe space or an event that is face-to-face -face, by providing a platform to their voice, to voice their opinions and showing how their communities effectively made changes, it conveys that this is a safe space to share. So how can we intentionally design safer spaces? We can intentionally design safer spaces in many ways. Number one, having your pronouns on display and encouraging others to do so uh, as well to give them comfort. This is an amazing way to develop a bond that is both inclusive and safe for those who are participating. Always try to read the land, land acknowledgement when you start a meeting or a presentation, perhaps before a large event or a conference, but be, be sure to ensure it, just be sure to do it um, because it connects intentionally to the reason why you have gathered today. And finally, be, hope, be open about who you are. Whether it is sh sharing about your identity, your mental health, or your personal interest, when adults are vulnerable and allow themselves to be seen as human and not just authority figures, it allows to create safe spaces for youth to share as well. And I'll pass it on to Shahana to read youth leadership. 
Hi again. So I'm Sahana and I'm going to talk about youth leadership and how to promote it. So there are many ways to promote youth leadership. So one way is to always listen to youth opinions. And this can be achieved by thinking from the youth's perspective, especially what they experience and what they want, and also including those perspectives when you're making important decisions. And another way is to seek their input. So this can also be achieved by not being afraid to seek input from youth. And if their input really cannot be in integrated or used, explain to them why. Because understanding the strategy to running programs, services, and volunteer teams is actually a huge learning opportunity for youth. Apologize when necessary. Nobody is perfect. We may forget to send reminder emails, we may use the wrong pronoun, or we may need to cancel an activity. But be upfront to the youth about why something happened and apologize and be true to your word and try to do better next time. Give youth opportunities. A good way to achieve that is to let youth facilitate and take ownership of an initiative so that they personally feel engaged, valued, and included. It's also important to give youth, especially those who may be more shy, very clear tasks that they can do to encourage their participation. Another good idea is to, to achieve this is to make sure that youth are able to do what they are asked of and to always support youth when they need it. Diverse and meaningful leadership of youth. So what is diverse leadership? Diverse and meaningful youth leadership is a crucial thing we need in our society, both inside and outside youth groups. But what is diversity in leadership? Well, diversity leadership means to recognize that there will be differences amongst people ranging from sexual orientation, gender identity, cultural background, disabilities and ability, income level and more. By recognizing these differences and embracing them while growing with youth, you will gain an understanding of their interests, talents and abilities. It also means making an intentional effort to recruit people from a range of different intersections. So what is meaningful leadership? When you embrace the differences of others and allow them to set a tone for your meetings, team efforts, and public activities, you will allow youth the opportunity to lead in something they find meaningful. Embracing diversity and actively connecting with youth boys in, while in, in the entire process. The tasks they take on with your organization will be very meaningful because they are leading something that they are determined and see value in, and they are passionate about. This has a ripple effect to the whole team and to the whole community. And why does this matter? This matters because we need proper representation. This means, for example, if you are leading an initiative for Black History Month 2022, make sure that Black youth leaders are present and that their voices are heard and are the vast majority of representations for that project. Talking as an ally is one thing, but allowing youth to speak on their lived experiences is something so valuable that cannot be compared to. By promoting this, you are not only allowing them to have a meaningful opportunity, but you are also allowing them to have a valuable impact. Now I'll be leading you guys through, um, I'll just give a small snapshot of the equity team toolkit. So the toolkit is written by Halden Youth Initiatives Executives and it consists of five specific sections that can help give students the confidence and background information, not only to start an inclusive team, but also maintain the success of the team at school. So through the use of this toolkit, a better understanding of both equity and how it can be implemented will be gained. The five sections consist of an introduction, a how-to guide, dismantling white supremacy, best practices and protocols, and a conclusion. It's not only used for schools, but it can also be used to identify events and ongoing uh, issues in the community. So the first section is the introduction, which consists of a letter from the editor 
in definitions to give individuals a good understanding of the language before beginning to read the toolkit. So some overarching values and reminders, they would be that remember that each school and community is unique. So it's very important and vital to listen to people mm. and acknowledge and credit racialized and 2SLGBTQIA plus authors and ad advocates and activists who've said all of these things before. So how would we be using this specific um, toolkit in schools and communities? Well, it was designed keeping a school environment in mind, the contents, the structure and wisdom from others can be used in many settings. In fact, in order to truly move the needle on equity in our communities, equity focused action must take place in every space. So just a small, the other last section is getting started. So we understand that this toolkit is a large body of work. The key will be to take your time and use the clickable table of contents to find things you want to know or to move through the toolkit section by section, taking time to digest and reflect. To begin, it's important to know how familiar folks are with the equity terminology, concepts, and experiences. This information will help everyone get on the same page and guide you to understand where more knowledge and understanding is needed before moving forward. You can do this in a casual conversation, guided discussion, or by accessing online modules and or video presentations. Remember, everyone on your team will be coming with a unique set of identities, experiences, and knowledge. Um, Trisha, do you want to take it away? Oh, sorry. The oh, so sorry, go ahead. The second section of the toolkit is the how-to guide, which includes project ideas and subcommittees. The guide gives users an in-depth understanding of the strategy and tactics used to build an equity team. It also includes prompts on how to connect equity efforts to particular times throughout the year and highlights the importance of having subcommittees for areas that need extra focus and attention. This would depend on each school community and environment. The how-to guide gives you tips on how to approach finding members to join your team and questions you need to ask yourself in order to properly communicate with your team. It also gives you tips on how to make your case to teachers, students, and admin, and what questions you need to ask yourself before reaching out to them. For teachers, that could look like having a solid understanding of what your team would look like. For students, that could look like knowing what the purpose of the team is and what students would need to commit to the team. For admin and budgeting, you would need to know how and when you have access to funds for things like projects, workshops, events, team merchandise, meeting snacks, etc. The how-to guide also helps you navigate general group expectations. For example, how to approach discussing the team structure with all involved parties, like assigning leadership roles and building an agenda. Examples of potential leadership roles members can take on are in the how-to guide, along with an example agenda. It is also important to discuss how out-of-meeting tasks are going to be facilitated and how teams can collaborate virtually. Some examples of possible platforms and tools include Google Classroom, Google Drive, email, group chats, etc. Pros and cons for all of these resources are also highlighted on the how-to guide. The how-to guide also helps you build your own ideas. For example, everything that goes into setting goals, how to set smart and time-bound objectives. The guide also has information about the basic tenets of social justice, the importance of language and of educating yourself, asking instead of assuming, and the importance of impact versus intention are just some of the topics touched upon. The how-to guide also talks about connecting with stakeholders. For example, 
other equity teams, student senate and trustees, powerful groups targeted for oppression, community organizations, and the public in general. The guide also touches upon how to properly convey good news after a project wraps. For example, staying vigilant on the language used in social media and blogs, as well as being sure to have expressed consent to use any pictures, videos, or screenshots. Sharing good news is also an excellent opportunity for people the project has impacted to share their experiences and stories. The guide also highlights all of the aspects of a project snapshot and their importance. The third section, which focuses on how to dismantle white supremacy culture and includes many specific topics such as mental health, ableism, and allyship. This section seeks to show readers how white supremacy culture is embedded in our community and how it affects individuals in many different ways. The term white supremacy can be heavy and difficult to process. In this toolkit, we are focused on dismantling white supremacy culture, a culture with values and structures in place that disconnect and divide us. As written in the White Supremacy Culture Still Here document by Tima Ukin, the ruling class elite or the power elite use the pseudoscientific concept of race to create whiteness and a hierarchy of racialized value in order to disconnect and divide people from BIPOC people, white people, land, animals, and ourselves. We are all impacted by white supremacy culture and we all have a role to play in dismantling it. We must recognize, however, that there are some disproportionately and negatively affected by this culture. This is not an attack on individual white people. The term white is used to describe the ruling class and the power elite here in Canada. European colonizers formed the country we call Canada on indigenous land through means of exploitation, brutality, and genocide. To dismantle white supremacy culture is to unpack and unlearn our conditioning. The way we dismantle will be unique to our identity, age, income, and more. Our toolkit includes ideas for individuals and groups. And the fourth section is all about understanding the protocols and best practices for connecting with different communities, such as individuals, communities, and their specific community organizations. We cover five groups, Indigenous, Black, Muslim, Disabilities, and 2SLGBTQIA+. Some of our key learnings are as follows. So firstly, do your own research. It is crucial to not rely on the emotional labor of others in order to learn. Unpack and learn and do the inner work. It is a lifelong process to unpack and unlearn our biases and negative beliefs. It is the intention to replace condition and behaviors and put it into action. It is not enough to simply learn about equity, diversity and inclusion topics. What is important is what we do with that knowledge. Building relationships is foundational. So forging relationships and building trust takes time, effort, and dedication. It is important for your equity team to feel safe around each other, hold one another accountable, and be empowered to speak up. And you have to remember that communities are not monoliths. So a person's experience is based on intersection, intersecting factors. And thus, it is vital to remember that no one person speaks on behalf of an entire identity. When collaborating on equity efforts, highlighting intersectionalities is key. Listen, ask, and amplify. As you learn more about the structures of society, the obstacles people face, and the movements for change, you may feel compelled to ask, show, outrage, and take action. While that is not inherently wrong, please be mindful of how you do this. Now, when we talk about urgency versus sustainability. So school-based teams are under particular pressure to complete tasks and campaigns in short timeframes. However, when collaborating on equity, many of which directly speak to the experiences of others, an urgent transactional and fast paced project will struggle to build meaningful relationships and create a lasting impact and may even cause harm. This section of the toolkit provides brief starting points for uh, starting points for folks to talk about terms and definitions, common missteps, and discover local voices and resources to continue their learning journey. Though the one pagers are not by any means an exhaustive list, it is important to provide those willing to learn with accessible information regarding how to sensitively engage with diverse communities in Halton. And now I'll pass it on to Varun to talk about the key credits. Thank you, Casey, for that. And to end our presentation today, we hope that the viewers in this room and readers of this toolkit will learn something new. 
We hope that you have a deeper appreciation for the mindsets needed to approach equity efforts and feel more empowered to lead your schools and community. This toolkit consists of ideas and methods to help tackle, tackle equity issues in our community like white supremacy culture, racism, and discrimination. We thank all the past youth volunteers and activists that have led great meetings and events to fight these problems, and we are the next generation to continue this fight. Please remember, remember that this is a living toolkit, meaning that changes will happen over time and different opinions of terminology, ideas, and actions will need, need up, updated in the toolkit. We learn new things every day and we are always open for feedback to improve our efforts. Thank you to all that have contributed to, to this toolkit so far, as well as the past leaders who have contributed to this support network, and we will continue your legacy for the future. Um, uh, uh, Varun, do you want to also say the people who have um, made some contributions to it? Yeah, sure. So basically, uh, slide we on. I like key credits. I want to Amber, Sidi, and Lily Vigiano for the executive team, and for helping us contribute to this toolkit and organizing it. Our executive team members are Mara Al Masri, Casey Bao, Gabriel Daimak, Aviva Muniwala, Hadra Sakib, and Sehar Sakib, as well as the com community connections team that have of the HYI. And I would like to thank. And for editing and review, Tanya Anderson, Kristen Kilgore, and Christopher Jones for, for review and editing. And for our community partners, Angela Belgard from Our Kids Network, Josh Deltor from Volunteer Action Center, and Niveen Elzahed from Halton Multicultural Council. And for our community partners, Sarina Saraf from Positive Space Network, and Janiel Thomas from Halton Black Voices. And then for editing style, Susan Chilton. Okay, so yay, my favorite part, the Q&A. So this presentation was a lot to take in. If any of you have any questions, you can hop on mic or you can drop them in the chat. Hi, I have a question. Um, Thank you so much for putting this presentation and this resource together. I think it's absolutely incredible and all of you have done a really good job with this presentation. So my role, I work for the Canadian Cancer Society and I help high school students plan Relay for Life at their high school. It's a leadership program. And before the pandemic, I would often be in person uh, meeting with like groups of students with the teacher present sometimes. Um, and what I would see most often would be microaggressions amongst students and like oftentimes it would be like in a very like jokey kind of manner and sometimes a teacher might be there but I'm like listening and I can hear this or see it happening and the whole group is listening in the instance where that happens like what is sort of a script that you would appreciate like have you had an instance where a microaggression has happened and an authority like a teacher or someone has like said something to alleviate that situation? Like, I never know what to say when I see that happening and I don't know what the right thing is to do or if I should just leave it. Um, well, first of all, you should not leave it. Thank you so much for your question. Um, personally, I cannot relate to that that much only because I've never had a teacher step in that does occur in my school um, a lot in the hallways in the classrooms stuff like that so if any of the other HYI uh, volunteers would have a response to that Kevin um yeah, yeah so, so um this has actually happened to me, me. Um, I've, I've had, had a teacher who is my progressive, um, and, and I know it's really hard to stand up to them because, um, like, uh, she was a nice teacher and she was very nice. She's just my progressive to people and she is very unaware to it, so it's hard to stand up to them. Um, and to anyone at all who is being my progressive, but I feel like this would be something, um, that, that still needs to be addressed. So I think I would suggest that you stand up to them but, but always also, also be like kind and respectful, respectful because they probably didn't didn't mean to um to be my progress adding on to what kevin said uh, i can't speak for everyone this is just what i 
would go with, but um, it depends on the situation really. I think if it was in like a joking manner, I would probably say, um, just like question their joke, be like, can you explain why that's funny? Or like make them like rethink their comment so that they know that it wasn't very kind and it wasn't funny. And that way they'll, cause they can't really explain a racist joke. It'd be like, so I think that's the best way to approach it in my opinion, but it really depends on each person and depends on the situation and how serious it is. Yeah, like for me, it's almost like I'm seeing it happening and they're like, it might be like two boys usually. That's just where I've seen it the most. And they'll be like joking around. And then one will make a microaggression as a joke to another one. And then they're both laughing, but I'm like, I don't know. They're probably not both thinking that's funny. Like the person receiving the microaggression is just going along with it because they don't want to like ruffle the feathers or make it seem like a big deal and they just let it roll off their shoulders and I'm like oh do I like go in there and I'm like what are you guys doing like what's going on here but so something like that would be a good thing to say would be like hey like I noticed you made that joke like you guys are both laughing but like you know why is that funny to you like I I don't know if that's very funny and say something like that yeah exactly thank you guys so much Sahar, go ahead. You said you were going add to add to that. Oh, yeah. Um, I was, uh, I basically agree with Casey. I've seen these sort of things happen in school before. And I just think that um, when you see that sort of stuff happen, um, when you uh, go up to them and be very, um, firm about it that might not be the best way to approach it but just making them feel like they did something wrong just like letting them know about it even in the most gentlest way and like making sure you're still being kind you're not using rude languages that's still um quite helpful I think because that kind of makes whoever may whoever makes the microaggressions that kind of forces them to think about what they've said yeah i agree with all of the topics everyone covered it is very important to address it please do not just leave it because it's um it helps people more if you talk about it right talk about issues you see and that will make change in your community. Um, Lily, have you seen any questions in the chat? My chat isn't open. No, not that I've seen. Sorry, and one last thing to add. Um, so yeah, just like Ari said, it's incredibly important to jump in and say something during those times because they feel comfortable to make those comments and make those jokes because it is so normalized. But the second that people start questioning those things then they won't feel as comfortable to make those racist comments or say those microaggressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you all so much. I feel I have a little more confidence now and it's okay. Sometimes I don't know what to say and I'm just seeing these like, students and they're just like joking around but it's I know that it's more harmful than like it's perceived um my I'm married to um a man who's immigrated from India and I didn't know what a microaggression was until I married him and learned all about that and realized how harmful it actually is and I see how much it hurts him and how one comment from someone saying something like where are you from to me doesn't mean much it doesn't hurt me but it really hurts him and like, yeah, so I just really appreciate all of you saying that. I think I'll definitely say something next time. No problem. I hope that helps a lot. Um, if anyone else has any other questions that they wanna ask, you can drop it in the chat or you can unmute. So it's Heather, I'm just curious from the team, what is the one key thing you want um, community organizations to take away from today? And, and how, what would be the one first thing you would like us to try to implement with this tool? Um, I'm 
Personally, I would say that the best thing all community partners could take away would be just acceptance. And I know that a lot of the community partners I have worked with are very inclusive of pronouns. They do the land acknowledgement, stuff like that. But there are some adults who don't respect that, right? And I think as adults, you have other adults listen to you, right? Like even with youth, other youth listen to youth and other adults listen to other adults. So when you see an adult standing out of line, they're more likely to listen to you. So even if it does feel uncomfortable, I highly urge you, do not be a bystander. Please educate those adults as to why it is wrong to misgender someone, as to why it is wrong to use microaggressions. And Varun, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I like to like build on to that, like because we you want to like really point out that if there's anyone raw feeling like having a tough life or anything like that, um, you like either help them or see what the resources they have. And this kind of actually did happen today when I was at school. I was like working in period two, and then there was a big incident, and I didn't want to get involved in it because I wasn't part of it at first. But then I I asked one of the like kids who was like who knew about it and they told me and I figured and I thought once I figured it out I just thought to at least console the victim or ask if they're doing okay because even though I wasn't part of the incident I want to make sure that everyone is doing go fine and fine because if they're like sad and like alone they won't be much like helpful or happy in the future so that's what I did today and I just hope that any incident that occurs in my school I want to make sure that any kid will be happy to feel like they belong and as well as make sure that they can study and have a good future. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that very much for everybody. All the um, insights have been great. Um, oh, we've got a couple of folks with their hands raised. Go ahead. Um, and also just to add on, like one key thing that I would also um, maybe hope you guys take away is also that um, not only like trying to implement like youth ideas by yourself, you should always try to let youth have that leadership opportunity because um, that's a like, huge learning experience from them. And it can also like turn out a different way when youth have more control over um, certain decisions in the team. And of course, always trying to make sure those leadership opportunities are open to all the youth, um, no matter like what situation they may be in. Great, great point. Thank you so much. Um, can I just get you to stop sharing because we'd like to see everybody's faces because we're just coming up to wrap up time. So if there, if there are more questions, we've got a few minutes. So don't hesitate. Um, I just wanted to share it with the team. You may not have seen in the chat, there have been some fantastic comments about the, uh, you know, the, the, the toolkit that's put together, the resources, uh, and how useful they they are and they're going to be um, for attendees. Um, the recording and the resources are going to be on the Halton website, which I will put out uh, an email with that information because our intention here, we want our community partners to go to the source. So we want you to, to go and engage the youth directly, uh, bring your concerns, engage them in that problem solving piece, um, invite them to speak to your board, to your um, programs, to your volunteers on how they can implement this toolkit. Uh, again, we want the opportunities for youth to move this forward and, and, and share their ideas and engage uh, in community. So, um, Volunteer Halton will have links to this to to the to the website, but um, we all, all this recording today and all these toolkits will be available on their website. If you were not uh, at last week's um, presentation, you definitely need to go to the website because there are also in, in to complement this great toolkit. There are some great videos on youth uh, volunteer recruitment, retention, and recognition, which the uh, another part of the team developed for us. Um, so just being cognizant of the time, just wanted to see if there's any other uh, questions, any other comments. It was a fantastic presentation. Thank you all so much. There's been a, clearly a lot of great work that's gone into this. A lot of uh, thought has gone into it. Um, I particularly liked 
you know, the, the idea that, you know, learning is ongoing, that this is a, that this is, this tool is going to develop uh, and it's going to be informed by the experiences of our youth and the changes that we community partners make. Um, and, you know, designing safe spaces, there are some fantastic, fantastic tools there. So thank you to everyone for uh, presenting today, for being part of this team. Thank you, community partners, for attending. And uh, we will get that information out to you within the next couple of days. Um, I do know that the um, council is transitioning, so there will be some updates happening to the website. Um, so be patient, <laughs> stuff that will be posted uh, and this information will be made available. So to everyone from the Halton Youth Initiative, thank you so much for being here today. Fantastic uh, work. Uh, you're all to be congratulated. And uh, I know for myself, I look forward to working with you and bringing this further into our community and implementing it. Lily, any last thoughts? I just wanted to thank everyone for joining in. Um, I can't wait to see these equity efforts continue. There's been so much great work already happening in Halton. We're just one, one piece of the puzzle. We all have a role to play. And special shout out to the volunteers who put this all together. It's been truly an honor working on this team for the last three years. I'm sad that my role is ending in two weeks, but excited for what the future holds. And we can't wait to connect um, the Halton Youth Voices Council with all these fabulous people in the coming weeks. So have a lovely evening, everyone, and we'll be in touch. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attending. Have a great night.